good evening everybody how are you i hope you are well so because of some urgent work i am going to give this uh, okay session as a recorded so whatever the doubt will become you can ask me as you know in your telegram group so today our topic is lathe so let's let, uh, discuss about lathe look this is the lathe right because generally you know with the topic which we are going to cover from now are what are lathe right lathe according to the gate point of view according to the gate point of view lathe right drilling okay drilling milling milling shaper shaper planer <coughs> and slaughter and generally you have seen the numericals will be come okay in this section numerical numerical will be come in this section numericals numericals okay i'm talking about the numerical point of view a numerical will be come in this section and what is the common common numerical which comes for a time calculation machining time calculation right machining time calculation a common question right a common question will become a common question will become machining time calculation right so let's discuss about the uh, lathe my dear student in lathe little bit i am going to give you some idea about the lathe this is a head stock in the head stock the main motor is there okay the main motor the main motor is placed in the head stock in the head stock there will be a main motor and this motor is responsible to give the power right this is a motor which is responsible to give the power now from that motor there is what there is a there is a basically a spindle okay there is a spindle on that spindle you can mount what a chuck where you can hold a work piece right now in between motor in between motor and uh, you know chuck there will be a gear box there will be a gear box right there will be a gear box so this is all about your head stock this is head stock where the where the main main components are there a motor then there will be a gear box and through the gear box a spindle is connected to the to the chuck that is work holding device now this is your carriage which will move linearly on the basis of the rotation of lead screw and lead rod i will tell you later don't worry about that now this is what tool post where you can mount the tool so this is the tool post my dear this is what this is a tool post where you can mount the tool this is a tail stock where you can uh, you can mount the other end of the work piece where you can mount the other end of the work piece okay on a tail stock or sometime we can hold a tool also there like a drill tool we can hold in the tail stock this is a bed where all the vibrations comes okay where all the chips and cutting fluids comes right okay so this is a bed right now as i told you that the carriage linear motion uh, rotation carriage linear motion will be depend on the rotation of either lead screw or rotation of le either lead rod yes there is a separate function of lead screw and lead rod so what is a separate function of lead rod and lead screw i will tell you later now below the carriage there is a vase yes a vase on which the carriage is slide see this is a vase okay this is a vase and this is a carriage you can see the carriage is slide on the vase all right so this is what this is vase as you can see this is another view uh, here you can see the figure properly look this is a carriage okay this is a saddle and below the saddle there is a vase right below the below the saddle there is a vase on which on which your carriage will move linearly and you can see there is a lead screw and there is a lead rod also lead screw and lead rod also right lead screw and lead rod also now let me proceed further let me proceed further and i will tell you some important point suppose 
basically on lathe generally you do two type of uh, you do two type of operation generally i i mean there are very various type of operation but generally you prefer to do two type of motion two type of operation one is turning and one is threading like okay right now suppose if you want to do a threading operation my dear if you want to do a threading operation okay or if you want to do a turning operation okay let me give you a, a brief brief view suppose that in a lathe i want to do a turning operation and i want to do a threading operation right so here i am writing a turning 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 operation right turning operation and here suppose if i want to do a threading threading operation right threading operation threading operation means where you want to cut a thread simple now you can see this is what this is a okay this is a head stock okay right this is a head stock okay on head stock you know uh, with the help of a spindle there will be a chuck there will be a chuck where you can mount a work piece this is a chuck this is a chuck chuck is what chuck is a work holding device simple chuck is what chuck is a work holding device so you can see this is a work right this is what this is the work piece this is the work piece okay little bit i am making larger this is what this is a work piece right this is a work piece and you are doing a turning operation and the work piece is rotating and you are doing a turning operation also so here you can see i am doing a turning operation and i have told you okay lot of about the turning operation in theory of metal cutting got it suppose it is a turned work piece and it has to be turned so here my tool is my tool is here this is my tool here this is my what this is my tool right now below the tool okay tool is mounted on where tool is mounted on the tool post right tool is mounted on a tool post so this is what this is the tool post am i clear this is what this is a tool post clear clear my dear student this is a tool post now now tool post is mounted on the carriage tool post is mounted on a carriage this is a carriage now as you know carriage will do a linear motion right carriage will do a linear motion now when the turning comes in a picture suppose you want to do a turning then the linear motion of this carriage will depend will depend on the will depend on the rotation of lead rod right lead rod this is a lead rod basically this is what this is a lead rod okay this is a sometime we called lead rod sometime we called or feed rod sometime we called feed rod right feed rod got it here lead rod and feed rod or lead rod or feed rod will rotate and carriage will do a linear motion okay then after a feed comes in a picture the feed which you told na the feed that is a feed f got it the feed the unit which which is fam, uh, uh, by which you are familiar mm per revolution that feed will comes in a picture right am i clear the feed of the tool which is along the axis of the work piece axis of the rotation of the work piece will comes in a picture here work piece is rotating with rpm n okay and you know work piece is getting that rpm for uh, from where from the motor now as you know the motor is there as you know the motor is there okay in the head stock because basically this is what this is simply a head stock right it is simply a head stock and this is what this is a motor right this is a motor and motor will supply the power with the help of what with the help of spindle to the chuck okay and in between the motor and chuck there is a gear box also there is what there is a gear box also basically you know the function of gear box gear box will manage the speed i mean by giving a particular input gear box will generate a particular output right this is a function now here the question is sir how a lead rod will rotate my dear student basically we transmit the power with the help of motor to what to the to the lead rod am i clear to the lead rod 
and here also there will be a what there will be a gearbox okay there will be a what there will be a gearbox with the help of that we can manage the rpm of uh, lead rod now because according to the revolution of lead law uh, re, uh, lead rod or feed rod the linear motion of carriage will will adjust right so this is all over the thing but when threading comes in a picture but when threading comes in a picture again let's say this is a headstock okay again there is a headstock and again let me let me draw let me draw let me draw just a minute let me draw the chuck that is a work holding device okay chuck that is a work holding device i'm trying my best so that you will get a proper figure this is a chuck that is a work holding device okay now this is a work piece where i want to make a thread simple where i want to make a thread so let me let me let me let me give you the proper proper view of the thread suppose that if you want to cut a thread okay if you want to cut a thread if you want to cut a thread right if you want to cut a thread okay got it this is a thread which i want to cut this is a thread which i want to cut right which i want to cut this and this this type of thread i want to cut okay so here the tools comes in a contact with the work piece like this okay like this like this now here the tool is mounted on where here the tool is again mounted on a tool post and tool post is mounted on where on the carriage simple and carriage will do a linear motion okay so that the desired pitch so that the desired pitch okay will be cut desired pitch p is what p is the pitch p i t c h pitch on a work piece on a thread which you want to cut am i clear so how can we cut that pitch actually there will be a what my dear student there will be basically a lead screw a rod is there whose name is what a lead screw right this is a lead screw my dear this is what this is a lead screw on this lead screw there will be a thread basically there will be a acme thread right there will be a acme thread this is what this is a lead this is a lead screw and lead screw having a acme acme thread right acme thread and this this lead screw is connected to the carriage with the help of with the help of half nut yes there is a half nut i will tell you i will show you if there is the yes okay there is no need to see the half nut i mean i mean how how a lead screw is connected to the carriage with the help of half nut a half nut is like this when you open there is a lever when you open the lever then half nut open okay now the nut is not in the contact with the lead screw but when you close the lever which is present in the carriage then the half nut close and it will grip the lead screw okay it will grip the lead screw half nut is a part of carriage now half nut when you close the lever now half nut is going to grip the lead screw okay indirectly lead screw is connected to what connected to carriage if the lead screw will rotate okay then 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 what happen the half nut will do a linear motion and half nut is a part of carriage then carriage will do a linear motion my dear am i clear now this is clear this half nut okay this is what basically i told you like uh, i told you it has a lead screw has a acme thread lead screw has a acme thread which has a pitch it has a pitch also l that is a pitch p i t c h pitch of the lead screw right once it rotate then the carriage will do what linear motion and from where it will get the power okay from where it will get a power again there is a motor there is a spindle this is chuck this is gearbox and from the motor you can you can supply the power to the lead screw am i clear you can supply the power to the lead screw right this is a gearbox my dear this is what this is a gearbox this is head stock sorry this is a what this is motor this is motor and this is your head stock this is your head stock right and this is what this is your gearbox this is a spindle right so this is a thing i hope the thing is clear the thing is clear now how can you synchronize this uh, how can you decide that which which type of pitch how much pitch should be cut on a desired work piece 
द डिजायर पिच ऑन अ वर्क पीस इज सेट बाय अ रिलेशन एंड दैट रिलेशन इज दिस दैट रिलेशन इज दिस माय डियर दैट रिलेशन इज दिस what is that relation ns ns is the rpm of the work piece let me write down here let me write down here let's say this is a work piece which is rotating with rpm ns rpm of the spindle that is a work piece p the uh, pitch which want to produce on a work piece and there is a, another parameter which is called as zs zs is the number of start which we want to produce on the work piece uh, right right okay now here l is the pitch of the what the lead screw nl is the rpm of what the lead screw right nl is the rpm of the lead screw and here zl zl is the number of start of the of the lead screw now the question is sir what do you mean by lead screw let me explain the number of start the concept of number of start is very simple basically for that you have to see what is lead lead is pitch p i t c h pitch into number of start okay number of start my dear let's say pitch is 3 or and number of start is 1 okay it means what when you rotate when you do a one rotation then there will be a 3 mm linear motion when the number of start is what 1 here pitch equal to lead when when number of start is 1 okay means suppose that suppose that if you are if you are here let's say after one rotation you cover the pitch and you will reach here see from here to here the pitch is going to be covered but suppose that suppose that the lead suppose that a screw has a number of start 2 then pitch is 2 and number of start is 2 then lead comes what 6 here the pitch is 3 but lead is what 6 it means when you do a one rotation it means it will cover two times of pitch means from here to it will go there and this pitch and this pitch will be going to be what cover am i clear suppose that if the lead suppose that lead equal to suppose that the pitch is 3 and number of start is what 3 then it comes what 9 means if you do one rotation then there will be a three times there will be a linear motion of three times of the pitch if the if you are here then if you are here means you have to cover this pitch then this pitch then this pitch right you have to cover this pitch this pitch and this pitch am i clear am i clear my student again i am again i am showing you suppose you are here means your thread is here means after one rotation you comes here at this point so you are covering only one pitch you are here means you are here okay when number of start is 2 means when you are covering two times of pitch means you comes from here to here then from here means two times of the pitch suppose you are here suppose the number of start is 3 it means you are covering three times the pitch 1 2 and 3 1 2 and uh, sorry yes 1 2 and 3 got it this is a concept of what number of start right so there is a relation there is a rela uh, relation and what is the relation relation is very simple number of uh, i mean the rpm of the work piece that is ns number of start on the lead screw that is that is zs okay the pitch which you want to produce on the work piece that is p equal to rpm of the lead screw into number of start of the lead screw that is zl into into the pitch of the lead screw that is l by this relation you can produce the desired pitch on the work piece am i clear so always remember this relation okay this is a schematic diagram actually this diagram i have separately drawn here and here so either you can refer this one or either you can refer this one the the, the thing is same so i'm going to delete this one diagram this diagram right i'm going to delete this diagram am i clear my dear student now let's move let's move so i hope this concept is pretty clear now in facing in facing as you know the work piece is rotating right in facing as you know the work piece this is a work piece which is rotating right this is your tool 
here you can see the work piece is what the work piece is rotating the work piece is what rotating the work piece is rotating okay and the tool will move along the face of the tool right tool will move along the face of the tool means from here to here means up to the center the tool will move from the periphery from the periphery from the periphery to the center of the work piece then then the proper see here the tool will move from uh, from periphery to the center of the work piece then the facing operation will takes place right facing operation will takes place one more operation which is very which is very famous which we generally do in a lathe that is tapering op uh, tapering op uh, operation what is the tapering operation my dear tapering operation is very simple basically suppose that there is a work piece of like this is my cylindrical work piece and from that cylindrical work piece we want to produce a taper surface okay we want to produce a taper surface right we want to produce that taper surface means means here we are going to cut means what means here we are going to cut here we are going to cut sorry here we are going to cut look no oh, oh my god what is happening okay okay so basically this portion is going to be cut simple ha <laughs> ha simple because what happened now all yes let me again draw this is the thing this tapering portion is going to be produced i mean to produce this tapering surface there are there are uh, there are you know five to six method but among the five to six method two methods are what very important for gate point of view because on that method the numerical will become on that method the numerical will become one method is swiveling which i will tell you in the in the upcoming slide uh, in this slide right in this slide i will tell you right in this slide i will tell you now let's discuss about the machining time about the machining time okay about the machining time in turning operation because generally the question will become the question then will become that if you are doing a turning operation if you are doing a turning operation then what will be the required machining time okay that this type of question generally comes so let's say this is a work piece as it is visible to you i hope so this is a work piece which is visible to you it has a initial diameter i will write again this it has a initial diameter let's say d1 after turning the diameter which is produced that is what that is d2 right d2 suppose that the depth of cut is what d or uh, i will it is better that i will make diagram again so that you can understand the thing in a proper way suppose that this is my initial work piece right suppose that this is my initial work piece and and here my tool is going to cut the work piece this is my tool right this is my what this is my tool you can see the work piece okay you can see and i want to cut this much length only okay this is my what this is my desired length which i want to machine which i want to what which i want to machine this is my machining length which i want to machine right which i want to machine length clear which i want to machine that is what the desired length which i want to turn right means what i want to produce let's say i want to produce uh, let's say let's say okay let me let me draw a proper diagram so that you will visualize the thing right let's say i want to this is after turning i am going to draw the diagram okay after turning i am going to draw the diagram this is the diagram this is the diagram after turning i will get this much let's say right this much so here you can see my tool starts its journey from that point so first of all to cut the work piece tool has to travel that much length let's say it is a a approach length then after it will cut the desired length desired cutting length sometime for a safety purpose we will move it is not necessary always but sometime for the safety purpose 
we will move our tool okay after the desired length after the cutting of desired length and that length is known as what over travel distance if it is given in the question then you take otherwise you don't need to take so the total cutting length will be equal to what approach plus much much uh, turning length approach plus turning length plus over travel right let's say here the workpiece is rotating with rpm n and the tool is moving with a feed of what with a feed of f mm per revolution okay then the velocity of the tool in meter the velocity of the tool if i will take this is the axis of the rotation of the workpiece along a x direction then i will take it is a vx velocity of tool which is moving along the axis of workpiece then the machining time is what that is total length divided by vx and how can you find the vx i told you in theory of metal cutting vx comes f into what n right f into n right so this is the machining time okay now what will be the material removal rate what will be the mrr material removal rate material removal rate you can see that if you cut this much depth of cut if you cut this much depth of cut that is what d okay a small d and here this is what this is the initial diameter that is d1 and this is the diameter which you get after turning that is what d2 right d2 so the material removal rate is what pi by 4 d1 square minus pi here the space is less here the space is less so what uh, should i do uh, what should i do i will shift that thing here yes now i will write see material removal rate is equal to pi by 4 d1 square minus pi by 4 d2 square into into vx that much volume per second is going to be what cut my dear and what is depth of cut very simple depth of cut is d1 minus d2 divided by 2 that is depth of cut so generally these formula are useful in your in your okay machining time calculation and you also know if the workpiece is rotating with rpm n then what will be the cutting velocity v is what v is the cutting velocity cutting velocity remember in theory of metal cutting cutting velocity well, cutting velocity so it is what pi d1 n here d1 if the d1 is in mm if the d1 is in mm then divide by what 1000 right if d1 or d2 is in mm so divide by 1000 so your cutting velocity will become in meter per minute so please remember these formula these formula are very helpful are very very helpful in your in your okay uh, calculation now to understand this thing let's try to solve a uh, one question so that you will understand the thing in better way now how much here how much machining time will be required to reduce the diameter of cast iron from 120 to 116 that is this is what d1 this is what d2 over a length of what over a length of 100 mm this is the over a length means it is he is saying that the turning will take place over that length so i will consider this is my total length i will consider this is my what this is my total length okay so there is no need to worry about the approach okay over travel because he has given the total length by a carbide tool cutting velocity that is v is given okay and the feed rate that is f is given that is 0.2 mm per revolution you have to find out the machining time very simple machining time is what machining time is total length divided by f into n here feed is given but rpm is not given so how can i find the rpm we know that cutting velocity equal to pi d n if d is in mm divide by 1000 d here 1 initial the initial diameter which you are going to cut that diameter generally we consider okay that diameter generally we consider right so meter per minute okay meter per minute so here the cutting velocity is 100 cutting velocity is what 100 equal to pi d1 is 120 rpm is we have to find okay rpm is we have to find divide by what divide by 1000 so let me calculate the rpm okay let me calculate the rpm 
आंसर डिवाइड बाय शिफ्ट पाई इनटू 120 ओके द आरपीएम्स विल बी कम्स आउट 265.258 ओके रिवॉल्यूशन पर मिनट रिवॉल्यूशन पर मिनट सो द मशीनिंग टाइम इज व्हाट मशीनिंग टाइम इज टोटल लेंथ इज व्हाट 100 एम ओके ट्राई टू पुट ऑल द थिंग्स इन यूनिट सो दैट योर आंसर यू विल नॉट मिस्टेक इन द यूनिट टू ओके F into n, F is what? 0.2, 0.2 into 265.258. So it is mm per minute. Okay, it comes in mm per minute, right? Mm per minute. So 100 divided by 0.2 into 265, 265.258. Right? Answer into 60. ओके माय डियर द आंसर जनरली हियर इन मिनट्स द आंसर इज 1.884 मिनट राइट यू कैन फाइंड आउट द आंसर इनटू सेकंड आल्सो बाय मल्टीप्लाइंग दिस इनटू विद 60 क्लियर नाउ द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम फेसिंग ऑपरेशन बिफोर डिस्कसिंग द फेसिंग ऑपरेशन ओके आई विल डिस्कस बिफोर सॉल्विंग द फेसिंग न्यूमेरिकल आई विल डिस्कस सम कांसेप्ट अबाउट द फेसिंग look this is a facing operation as you can see okay right now please try to understand the concept which i am telling you which is a very important concept in and in uh, and you will not find that concept in any book which i am going to explain here okay which i am going to explain here let's say this is the cross section of the work piece where we are doing a facing operation right where we are doing a facing operation this is the cross section of the work piece okay and the work piece is rotating with rpm n with rpm n okay now there is a tool there is a tool this is a tool this is a tool by which by which we are doing a facing operation and you have provided a feed across the face across the face suppose across the face okay in mm per revolution my dear student in turning operation we provide the feed along the axis of rotation so that's why i i called fx but in facing operation you provide the feed uh, to the tool across the across the okay or along the face of the tool so uh, along the face of the work piece so that's why i generally call it is what fy and it is what mm per revolution now when the tool is there then the cutting velocity you know it will act in the downward direction and you know the general formula that v equal to pi d n divided by 1000 right is that the is, is it is a formula and it is acting in the downward direction let's say if the rpm is constant then velocity is directly proportional to what if the rpm is constant then the velocity is directly proportional to what your diameter yes see if you are here if you are here or if you are here then the velocity is what is going to be very my dear from here to here see at the center diameter is zero so the cutting velocity is what zero basically okay basically it is what zero zero so here the velocity is going to be what very so in the facing operation in facing operation in facing operation right in facing operation please remember this thing please remember this thing right please remember this thing right please remember this thing here the velocity is going to be what very clear now i will come to the facing question now i will come to the facing question it's a question from facing now a disc of 200 mm outer and 80 mm inner diameter is faced there is a disc which is going to be faced whose outer diameter is 200 and inner diameter is 80 the question is very simple here you are not, you are not facing the disc here you are not facing the disc from periphery to the center of the disc from periphery to the center you are not moving the tool from the periphery to the center of the work piece basically you are moving please remember what i am saying basically what you are doing let me show you let me show you what you are going to do basically you are doing this is the outer diameter of 200 mm and this is the inner diameter of what 80 mm please see a disc of 
a disc of 200 mm outer and 80 mm inner diameter is phased off with 0.1 mm per revolution feet right it means this is what my dear this is what my dear this is the outer diameter right this is the outer diameter that is 200 mm right this is the 200 mm and this is what this is basically 80 80 mm so you are moving your tool you are moving your tool you are moving your tool okay from here to only up to here the displacement of the tool or the machining length of the tool okay please 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 be focused what i am saying the machining length of the tool is what is this means it is what the half of 200 is what the half of 200 is 100 half of 80 is 40 so 100 minus 40 it comes 60 so my dear this is a machining length and right this is a machining length in facing operation one more thing one more thing in facing operation the thing is very common suppose that here if you want to find out the if you have find out if you uh, if you want to find out the machining time so again the machining time is what machining length if the diameter of the workpiece here if the diameter of the workpiece is what d okay then the tool travel distance is what half of the diameter you can see that is the machining length divide by what divide by your v y the velocity of the tool which is traveling which is traveling that is v y velocity of the tool which is traveling okay which is traveling uh, along the face of the tool right radially so here the machining time is d by 2 and what is v y it is f y into rpm this is the machining time in what in the facing operation am i clear am i clear now here you can see there is a twist in the question what is the twist in the question that the tool is moving from the periphery okay from the periphery means from 200 mm to 80 mm am i clear from 200 mm to 80 mm, uh, 80 mm diameter so this is a machining length okay and as i told you that the velocity is going to vary linearly look here the velocity is this and here the velocity will be this and the velocity is directly proportional to the diameter so it will be very linearly am i clear it will be very linearly right it will be very linearly look here it will be very linearly it will be very linearly this is going to be very linearly this is going to be very linearly this is going to be very linearly so look here right now what we have to find okay here a uh, feed is given the feed is given that is a feed and it is 0 0.1 mm per revolution that is what that is a feed right that is feed the facing operation is undertaken at a constant at a at a at a constant cutting speed that is 90 meter per minute okay the main tangential cutting force okay assume approach and over travel of the tool cutting tool uh, of the cutting tool to be zero the machining time you have to find my dear right you have to find the machining time am i clear you have to find out the machining time so what will be the machining time look come to the question again come to the question again here the machining length you know so what will the machining time machining time is total machining length divided by vy right vy that is what this is a vy now basically the velocity of tool the velocity of tool that is vy now here lt is what 60 now vy is what fy into n but in the question n is not there how can i find n and v is what pi d n divided by 1000 my dear at every point at every point velocity is changing at every point velocity is changing then how which velocity you can put which velocity you can put at here the velocity is different 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 which velocity you can put for finding the rpm that's why in the question he has given a constant cutting speed of 90 meter per minute means what my dear please see please see the logic please see please see the beauty of the question he has assumed that from here to here the velocity is almost constant right he assumed that the velocity 
the velocity from here to here, the velocity from here, from here, okay, the velocity is what? From here, from here, the, the velocity is what? Almost constant, right? The velocity is almost constant and it is what? It is a V average is given. Now, we have seen that V is directly proportional to diameter. See here, see here, I taught you a concept right now. I taught you a concept. I taught you concept V is directly proportional to diameter means here V average is given. So, it is obvious that if you are talking V average concept means it is there. V average me V is directly proportional to D. It means V average is there then V you, you have to take the D average. The D average on which the machining is going to be take place right D average. So, here what will be the D average my dear what will be the D average? D average right you have to find the D average and what will be the D average this is D average D average is very simple D1 plus D2 up to where the machining will take place D1 D2 that is what 200 plus 80 divide by 2 it will become 1 uh, 280 so I think 140 mm will be come right 280 to oh, yes 140 mm will become right so here V average equal to pi D average into RPM divide by what? Divide by 1000 and it is equal to 90. Now, pi 140 into RPM divide by 1000 equal to what? 90. Here comes the RPM, my dear. 90 into 1000 answer divide by answer divide by shift pi into 1000 shift pi 1000 okay oh sorry yes 90 into 1000 answer divided by 140 answer divided by shift pi so here comes the rpm rpm comes 204.62 right 7 revolution per minute this is the rpm now you got the rpm you got the rpm you have to calculate the machining time right so, you know the machining time is that machining time is 60 divided by F that is 0.1. I hope it will be a 0.1. Let me see 0.1 mm per revolution into RPM that is 204.62, right. So, 60 divided by 0 0.1 into answer it is coming 2.93, 2.932 2 minute my dear minute let me see the answer 2.93 option a i hope you got the concept right i hope you understood the concept so this type of variety i have i have covered so this type of numerical generally comes in your lay now the next type of variety of numerical which comes in your uh, lathe is that is a taper turning okay that is a taper turning and i told you what is the meaning of taper turning in taper turning there is a cylindrical workpiece I told you that in a taper turning there is a cylindrical workpiece and from that cylindrical workpiece basically what you do you are going to produce a taper workpiece simple you are going to produce a taper workpiece this is a taper workpiece my dear this is what this is a taper workpiece okay to produce this uh, taper surface there are methods like uh, using a compound slide using a form tool offsetting the tail stock and using a taper turning attachment among from this formula among from this uh, methods generally the question numerical question will become either from the using a compound slide or using a offsetting the tail stock so let me discuss you okay using a compound slide what we do basically in a compound slide what we do now we adjust the tool we adjust the tool or you can say a tool post we adjust the tool in the first method i am talking about what i am talking about this first method in the first method we adjust the tool post okay we adjust the tool post or in such a way we adjust a tool post in such a way that the tool will move along this path so the turning will be happen okay when the workpiece is going to rotate with rpm n then the turning will be happen am i clear then the turning will be happen and the taper surface is going to be produced here you can see the feed not you can see here generally when you do a simple when you do a simple let's say a turning process 
when you do a simple turning process my dear this is the turning operation okay suppose that this is a tool okay suppose that this is what this is a tool when during turning process during turning during turning you can move the tool along the axis of the workpiece right along the axis of workpiece and we call it is fx and we call it is fx and if you make the x6 axis then it is a x axis and it is a y axis right but see in the taper turning here the feet is not in the x direction not in the y direction my dear means you have to manage the feet along the x axis and along the y axis right you have to manage the feet along the x axis and along the y axis basically you are moving the tool in xy plane that's why he says a compound slide because you have set the tool post in such a manner so that there will be a compound feet in x and y okay in x sorry in x and y right now this this method will be done by manually by swiveling the swiveling means what there will be a lever and you rotate that lever uh, you rotate that lever and the tool will be moved along the along this path got it along this path so this is this is the method this is the method right this is the first method now suppose that out of the total length suppose that out of the total length this is the this is a figure basically out of the total length okay out of the total length this 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 part of the length is hold in the chuck okay and out of the total length i am doing a taper turning only this portion let's say it is what let's say it is a small l let's say it is what it is a small l or i will make the diagram again no problem for that okay no problem for that look here look here i will make the diagram again there is no problem okay no problem at all suppose during turning process i have to look this is the basically okay now see let's see simple so out of the total length out of the total length i have to make a taper surface only in this length let's say it is a small l this is a capital d this is a capital d and let's say it is what is a small d okay it is a small d my dear this is a taper surface if you uh, imaginary if you extend a imaginary line if you extend like this like this okay so this is what my dear this is a 2 alpha this is what this is a 2 alpha right this is a 2 alpha that is a cone angle okay uh, cone angle or you can say taper angle right you can say 2 alpha cone angle 2 alpha cone angle okay cone angle cone angle or you can say taper angle okay taper angle right taper angle now if you make it a half then it is half of the cone angle or half taper angle now c here here what will be the 10 alpha i mean i will draw again a imaginary line here okay a line which is parallel to this so if this is a, a half of that alpha means this alpha right so 10 alpha here 10 alpha what comes 10 alpha will become 10 alpha will become this length and this length is what capital d minus small d by 2 divided by small l so capital d minus small d divided by 2l so this is a relation by which you can set by which you can set you know tapering right now the another please see the formula here 10 alpha is d minus capital d minus small d divided by 2l got it alpha is half taper angle capital d is the diameter of the stock initial d is the small diameter of the stock after after tapering and length of the taper l is what small l is what length of the taper now there is another method which is offsetting the tail stock yes offsetting the tail stock how can we do this offsetting the tail stock let me explain you let me explain you suppose that this is your workpiece this is your workpiece okay and this workpiece is hold 
in dead, uh, hole in between the dead center. This is a live dead center. This is a live dead center which is attached to the which is attached to the okay in the spindle side. So that's why we call a live center. Live center. It is a dead center. That dead center is attached to the tail stock. Now here the workpiece. This is a workpiece. You can see this is a workpiece. Axis of rotation. Now here we are displacing this dead center just below or just about just below but but we have to offset the dead center with a very small height otherwise what happen the vibrations will be produces my dear the vibrations will be produces okay so this is the way okay this is the way by which let me draw a proper diagram okay basically you are offsetting you are offsetting okay i am making it very large so that you can visualize right you can visualize but this much offsetting is not happen okay this much offsetting is not happen this is offsetting now the workpiece will rotate about this axis of rotation about this axis of rotation right about this axis of rotation if it will rotate then we have to just move the tool now it is it is rotating in conical way conical way so when the workpiece is rotating conical way and you just move the tool then what happen a conical surface is going to be cut right a conical surface is going to be cut but let's say this is my total length again this is my total length okay total length of the workpiece let's say capital l but among the total length i am only producing the taper surface up to this length that is a small length so after the process the whole scenario will be look like this okay the whole scenario will be look like this my dear will be look like this please see okay i will try to manage all the things in a proper way this will be the thing right this will be the thing this will be the thing as you can see the taper is very small yes because the offsetting height is very small here the offsetting height right here this offsetting height is very small h that is a offsetting height it is a small if you keep a large if you keep a large value then what happen what happen there will be a vibration okay there will be a vibration now as you know this is the total length my dear this is what this is a total length that is capital l okay and this is what this is the taper length okay where you are doing a tapering this is what this is a, a small diameter that is small d and this is what this is the capital diameter of the other taper surface now again the taper angle okay again you can find the taper angle my dear you can find the taper angle look here this is a taper angle see this is a taper angle this is a alpha very small half taper angle alpha very small okay maybe you are able to see alpha okay this is alpha very small so here my dear 10 alpha is equal to what okay 10 alpha again you will write capital d minus small d divided by 2l also basically you are tapering by that much angle very small alpha this is what this is a taper alpha this is the offsetting height this is a cone basically once you once you offset then the alpha half cone angle is going to be generated now half cone angle is going to be generated about that the workpiece will rotate and the cone is going to be produced so that is the alpha this alpha alpha is same so according to that the 10 alpha my dear is what it is h by offsetting height divided by capital l so here alpha is small as i told you as i tell you h is small so generally alpha is small alpha is small so that's why that's why 10 alpha and this 10 alpha is equal so you can write h by capital l so from that relation my dear you can find the offsetting height right clear so i have i hope this is clear now let's solve some question so that you can understand the concept okay so that you can understand the concept see a shaft a question came in gate 2015 me set 3 paper right me set 3 paper now see now see a shaft of length 90 mm 
has a taper portion of a 50 55 mm means 90 mm length has the capital length and the taper portion is smaller that is 55 the diameter of the taper is 80 at one and 50, 65 at the other end so here capital d is 80 mm and a small d is what 65 mm if the taper is made by tail stock set over method tail stock set over method means you offsetting the tail stock the method is what the method is offsetting the tail stock okay right offsetting the tail stock the taper angle that is the half taper uh, the taper angle so sorry the taper angle and the set over respectively set over is more is what that is the height and he want to the taper angle okay so do you know my dear that 10 alpha equal to capital d minus small d divided by 2l equal to h by capital l so first of all you need what offsetting offsetting height very simple capital d is what 80 minus 65 divided by twice of twice of 55 okay h by l l is what 90 l is what 90 so let's see what be the offsetting set over uh, what is the set over height 80 minus 65 answer divide by 2 into 55 answer into 90 12 my dear offsetting height is comes 12.272 mm so 12 12 12 here the 12 is there so this must be my answer but i will calculate the uh, taper angle also again 10 alpha equal to what equal to 80 minus 65 divided by 2 into 55 so 80 minus 65 divided by 2 into 55 shift 10 inverse answer so here alpha comes 7.765 my dear this is half taper angle and he want to know the taper angle means what he wants to know the 2 alpha so answer into twice so alpha comes 15.53 degree 15.532 if you convert in the minute or second then it will be the answer so i hope you understand this thing and the last question of today's class is it came in gate 2008 and is a very complicated very uh, not a very complicated if you know the theory of uh, lathe very well if you know about the lathe very well then you can solve this question okay what he says i will uh, i will correlate the question with the figure because the complete question is present uh, is here with the figure what he say there is a motor and there is a pq rs are just point pq rs are just point there is no other significance apart from point now uv is a gearbox basically for what for the spindle for the workpiece right there is a spindle and there is a workpiece so uv is a gearbox for what for the workpiece so that you can manage the rpm of what workpiece now this is a what this is a lead screw this is what this is a carriage and in that carriage there is a half nut remember i told you the lead screw is connected to the carriage with the help of half nut and half nut is a part of what carriage right now if the this if this lead screw will rotate then carriage will do linear motion okay now what he says what he says there is a gearbox us there is a gearbox us we, you have to place us okay us is a gearbox us is a gearbox you have to place us okay for a lead screw basically it is for, for lead screw and you have to place that gearbox us in such a way so that us will not affect uv and uv that is a gearbox of workpiece will not affect the rotation of lead screw please 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 listen carefully i am repeat again i am repeating again please listen, listen carefully you have to place us which is a gearbox for lead screw in such a way so that it cannot affect the uv that is a gearbox of workpiece and uv should not affect the okay will not affect we should not affect us which is the gearbox of lead screw so where you can place here you cannot place at r and s because if you place at r and s then it will it comes in between ub and workpiece 
then it will affect the affect the it will affect what it will affect the rpm of work piece na and it is a condition then uv which is directly connected to the work piece it should not be affected now which place this place is not possible either you can place p or either you can place p uh, q means you can place p and connect here or you can or or you can place you you can connect q and e you can connect from motor q and e and place us here okay you can connect p and e and place us here two possible are two possibilities are there so q e q and e are connected us is placed in between p and q no if you are going to place in between p and q then if you change the us then uv will affect so this is not the answer okay this is not the answer right this is not a answer right this is not a answer now again s and e are connected s and e are connected if you connect s and e and u and us is placed between rs oh my god again blunder again blunder okay if you connect s and e and gearbox is you are uh, if you are placing the gearbox here uh, then what happen if you change the uv then us will change if us will change then it will affect and the condition is that both are not affecting to each other okay so this is not again a possible case okay this is not again a possible case so cancel this q and e are placed q and e q and e are connected connect q and e us is placed in between qe yes this is the possible answer s and e s and e are connected you no know, no so this is a possible answer so your answer is what c so this is all about today's session in the next session we will again meet and we are going to discuss about well thank you very much for watching this session